Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked to Fly Fly Fishing, and today I want to talk to you about the advantages and disadvantages of a shooting head system versus a full line. Now, if you're used to fishing trout lines and, and trout, standard trout fishing or smallmouth bass fishing, you're normally using a full line, and what that means is the head of the line and the running line are all one piece. And that confers certain advantages during fishing, which we'll get into in a minute. So it, normally, uh, when you're into single-hand uh, fly fishing, you're not going to encounter shooting heads very often. Though some full lines are built like shooting heads, like the old Airflow 40 Plus lines, for example. They were built on a shooting head formula, but they were full lines. Now, there are shooting head uh, systems for uh, single-hand rods, trout size rods. Uh, but they're not common. So I'm going to leave, set those aside. The other type is a shooting head system, like what I have here. These are meant for two-handed rods. So, and they come in packs, as you can see, and there's just a head in here, uh, just the head of the line. Like if you think of a weight forward trout line, it's just the weight forward part. That's all that's here, and it has a loop at the back end, and you can probably see that black loop there. That's where we attach it to running line. So we would have running line on our reel and we would put on a head or remove it as we need. So you have something that looks like this, which is a spool that has backing, which is the yellow. Then we have the orange, which is the running line. And then we have this uh, mint green or moss green, whatever you'd call it. That contains, that's the head. That's, this, in this case, it's an airflow scout. So it, we have the head looped to the running line. You can see it a little bit better on this side. So you can loop the head to the running line and you fish it as a full line, but there is that loop to loop connection in between. Uh, when you get into spay lines, usually they're full lines. This is a full line. It's an old uh, airflow delta. Uh, you can get full lines, long belly lines all the way out to you know, I've seen them as long as 90, 90 and 100 foot long, where the head and the running line are all one piece. You could also get lines like this that are heads. Uh, they're not very common, uh, and I'm not going to get into them at all, but they are available if you were so interested. I personally don't use them, and I don't like them. I've tried them, and I find there are some problems when fishing them. So we'll uh, stay with, you know, full lines versus our shooting heads and we'll talk about the differences. Well, the biggest difference I would say is if you have a lot of lines <laughs> you're into a lot of spools if you want to have them all mounted and use them. And in this pile I've got, uh, let's see, this one here, this top one that's a, a sniper line, which is mostly used in salt water. This is a long belly intermediate. I've got a sinking line here. I've got an intermediate in this hand. Oh, I've got two intermediates. Both of these are intermediates. So, you know, in salt water, uh, three, four of these are my salt water lines, and the, the long belly is my cold water uh, steelhead line. So these all fit in the same reel. Okay, and these are all Danielson uh, LW8s, uh, 812s. Uh, so they all fit in the same reel, and I need all these spools if I want to use all these lines. But the reality is, this is all I need for a spool if I go with a head system. So, you say, oh good, I'm going to go with the head system. Hang on. There are disadvantages to the head system, and one of the big disadvantages is that loop-to-loop -loop connection. And it comes in two places. Uh, one is if you are pulling that loop-to-loop -loop connection back into the guides, and then you want to cast it back out again, you'll hear a lot of noise as it goes out the guides. Uh, a noise in of itself is just annoying, but it doesn't cause a problem. Where the problem is, is every time it's hitting a guide, that loop-to-loop -loop connection is hitting guide, is sucking some energy out of your cast. And not only that, if you need to be accurate with the cast, it's hurting your accuracy as well. So you're losing both the accuracy and the distance if you pull the loop-to-loop -loop connection into the guides and try to cast it back out. And that particular problem 
is uh, especially true where I fish, uh, for example, on striped bass like we have on the screen right here. I'm using a full line in that picture. Uh, actually, I'm not in that picture. I'm the one taking the picture, but nevertheless, I, I'm using a full line, and so are my son and my friend. We're all using full lines, and the reason for that is when we're fishing for striped bass, we're stripping the line, the fly, quite close to us. The head of the end of the head of the guides can be in our stripping basket. So if you're trying to cast that back out and there's a loop to loop connection, that's a major pain. And that's also the reason why I don't like long belly head systems because you're often pulling that loop back into the guides and you're trying to make out a cast. Another problem we get into now, I've not personally experienced this, but I know uh, other people have. Some of the loops out there can be pretty. Um, bulky. So when they're fighting a fish, normally I don't have a problem with this, you're pulling or reeling in and you're reeling the uh, head back into the guides. Uh, you can hear that loop of the fish runs, you hear brrrr as it goes out, but it doesn't catch. It's not a problem. When you're, you know, fighting a fish, that loop gets really flat and really pulled tight. So it's usually not, it doesn't usually catch. But I've heard of some people having problems with the loops catching. And that's probably because the loop is too stiff. And uh, it doesn't flatten out under pressure from the fish, and then it catches on the guide. So that might be a problem for some people. Uh, when they're fighting a fish and you're bringing the guide, that loop in and out of the guides as the fish runs, and then bringing it back in. Personally, I've never had a problem, but I've heard that some people have. So. You know, the head pro the, that loop-to-loop -loop connection can be an issue. Another place where it's an issue is if you fish in below freezing conditions. Uh, I had a friend who lost a, a nice fish because his tip-top got iced up, and as he's trying to pull the, uh, the loop into the guides, it wouldn't go past the tip-top because the loop-to-loop -loop connection couldn't make it through the iced-over tip-top and he would have risked breaking his rod if he'd pulled it in. So, you know, if you're going to fish in freezing conditions, a head system is one of the worst things you can use because it won't go through ice over guides. Yeah, full line is, that's the reason why this thing here is my cold water line. It's a, in, a slow intermediate, long belly, uh, full line. I don't have to worry about icing with this line. But if I was out there with this line, and it was in icing conditions, I could very well run into a big problem if I hooked a fish. And you can think of that fish, it's going in and out as it's running, and my guides are just getting more and more iced over. Plus, with these head systems versus a long belly, I'm doing a lot of stripping. So I'm really icing up my guides when I'm using something like this. So I don't recommend head systems in freezing conditions at all. If you've got any kind of full line, use it. And the longer the head, usually the better it is because you don't have to do as much stripping. But that's a special condition. Most people aren't fishing where it's below freezing, so it's usually not a, a, a big problem. Another issue that I've run into, uh, and again, it's older lines, usually not um, new stuff, is that the, the loop at the end uh, of the line can get damaged because it is, uh, it's always in the tip top when you're casting. So it's always being worked and uh, you end up getting damage in that loop and having to replace it. Now I do have a video on how to replace your running line loops, but that is a problem you can get into where you can get damage to that loop um, and so occasionally even damage to the rear loop on the head, though that I've never had that personally happen. I know other people occasionally had problems with the, uh, the loops cracking uh, on the back of the head, again because of all that flexing that's going on at the tip of the rod when you're making your casts. So to wrap it up, the loop-to-loop -loop connection can cause you problems when you're fishing, when you're casting, and when you're dealing with freezing conditions and wear and tear. Uh, the full line just casts smoother if you're bringing the line into the guides, and it also fishes smoother. You don't have to worry about the, that joint going in and out of the guides when you're fighting a fish, and it's much less of a problem in freezing conditions. The big disadvantage is you, you use one spool versus all of these spools when you have multiple lines and you want to mount them all and use them all. So that's basically the difference why we do one over the other. 
and uh, I use both as you can see and I have enough spools to manage both but if you don't have the budget to be able to get lots of different spools the head system is the way to go and then you basically live with any of the difficulties that come with it but other than that you know if you can manage the spools hit uh, full lines are great cheers <laughs>